As a women's health professional, you already know the value in cycle tracking, but are you equipped to support your clients with complex cycle issues? Do you know how to read complex menstrual cycle charts? Were you ever taught specific step-by-step protocols to deal with irregular bleeding patterns, abnormal cervical mucus, chaotic basal body temperatures, and progesterone issues? That's where FAM comes in. The Fertility Awareness Mastery Mentorship Program is designed specifically for women's health professionals with busy practices. We've cut out all the fluff so we can be laser focused on what you need to serve your clients better. Registration is now open for the next class of FAM. Classes start toward the end of June and early bird registration is open until June 14th. Apply today at fertilityfriday.com slash famlive. That's fertilityfriday.com slash F-A-M-M-L-I-V-E. This is the Fertility Friday Podcast, episode number 523. Today's interview is powerful. I'm sharing my conversation with Clarissa Briones, who is a current member of our FAM, Fertility Awareness Mastery Mentorship Program. And she shares her experience with subfertility after coming off the pill. And her story is something that I've heard time and time again. And so there's so many important nuggets out of her story so many important opportunities to kind of reverse engineer and learn about some of the strategies that would be more optimal for women to think about when they're approaching their use of the pill especially as it gets closer and closer to your childbearing years so this is something i've spoken about in the fifth vital sign this is something that lily and i spoke extensively about in real food for fertility this whole concept of how we should be looking at our relationship with the pill especially as we get older and as we start planning for our families so today's episode is i would say a must listen And if you know anybody in a similar situation, any friends who've been on the pill for quite some time and you know they plan to conceive in the future, I feel like this episode is is something that would be extremely helpful for anyone in that situation who's never really considered what would happen if you came off the pill and you didn't get pregnant right away. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode with Clarissa. And I'm excited to be here today with Clarissa Briones. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for being here. It's really an honor to be on this podcast. It really feels like a full circle moment because I am such a huge fan. I listen to your podcast all the time. (laughs) Oh, amazing. Well, and it's so fun. I love doing these episodes with our fam practitioners. So at the time that we're recording this, I still can't believe that we're kind of like two months out (laughs) Mm -hmm. because it feels like we started just yesterday, but you have made it a lot of the way through the program. So we're in our final couple of months. So congratulations, first of all, it's a huge accomplishment, even making it this far, (laughs) Um, but really excited to, to have you on the show. So I feel like a good place to start so the listeners can get to know you a little bit, maybe share with us a little bit about uh, what you do and also how fertility awareness kind of came on the scene for you. So how you discovered charting and what inspired you to jump into the program and and kind of make this more of your main focus? Yeah. Okay. Great question. So I'll start by sharing a little bit more about what I do now. So I am a certified fertility health coach and I aim to help women get pregnant naturally. And I do that through a holistic approach that really works through their mind, body, and soul. So I do believe that fertility is more than just physical. I feel like there's there's a magical element, maybe a spiritual element that we don't always talk through as often. So that's part of what I do with my clients. And I found this work through my own personal fertility journey. And when I started trying, I definitely started trying, I'll say quote unquote later in life, but I was 30 at the time. And I had been focused up until that point on my career you know, I had already graduated college. I had a stable career. We bought a house. So I just wanted to make sure that all of my eggs and ducks were in a row, right? And making sure that I was checking off those boxes. And so I never anticipated that I would have challenges getting pregnant. I always knew I wanted to be a mom. And for me, it just felt like something that was so certain, so sure that I never thought to question it. 
I was really healthy or so I thought. <laughs> I didn't realize at the time how stressed and how maybe how much underlying inflammation and things I was having and probably nutrient deficiencies too. But at the time I thought I was really healthy. I worked out a lot. I looked like I was healthy from the outside looking in. Yeah. So when we started trying, we tried for a few months just on our own, nothing happened. And naively I thought too, okay, you just really have to have sex all the time in order to get pregnant, right? So we were having sex all the time, not knowing that there were actual certain days that I should have been timing it accurately. So it ended up being a three-year journey, but I will say for probably a year and a half, we were absolutely not timing it accurately, knowing what I know now. But yeah, I would say about a year in, it started to take a really big toll on me just from an emotional standpoint, a mental standpoint. I was really depressed. I felt like I was just triggered by everything. I couldn't understand why I wasn't getting pregnant. And it was just really hard on me. I felt like I hit this rock bottom in my life and I felt like such a different different version of myself almost, right? Where I didn't really recognize who I was becoming at that point. And I wanted to get back to how I used to feel. And I started to explore some of the mindset pieces too, and just tried to work through that component and make myself really feel better on the journey because at the time it was just really difficult. And um, this was around the time too, I hadn't discovered charting yet necessarily, but I had discovered your podcast and then also your book too. I read your book and that was a life-changing moment for me, I will say, because up until that point, I had been on birth control before we started trying. I was on it for 13 years and for no reason other than just to avoid pregnancy. And I had no idea the effects that it was having on me. I had no idea how detrimental really it could be. I felt like I just made this decision without a lot of information. And so reading your book gave me a whole lot of insight, introduced me to the world of charting. And from there, I was just hooked thinking like every woman needs to read this book. I remember telling my mom, my friends, everybody about the book, like, have you read this? Because every woman needs to read this book. So yeah, I think that's how I got started. I'll pause there and just see if you have any questions or if you want me to continue on. I feel like you can continue. I'm, I, I don't know. It's what I always say, I think, when I'm doing these episodes, because we have been together for how many months? It's seven? Seven now. Mm-hmm. Seven months, yeah. Yeah. But when we do this format uh, in the podcast, I feel like I, I know the details because mm-hmm. we, you know what I mean? Like we've checked the boxes, but to hear it in your words is really, really powerful. Mm, yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. This fertility journey, it really ended up being a gift for me because it not only allowed me to discover cycle charting, which I felt like really empowered me as a woman to understand my body and to understand how it worked and to take back the reins because so much of that up to that point in my fertility journey, I felt like I had no control. I felt like everything was out of my control. And I am a type A control freak, high achieving woman. And to have something not go my way, no matter how hard I worked at it was really just shocking to me. (laughs) And so this gave me a lot of that empowerment back and allowed me to really understand what was going on. The charting piece too helped me identify that I had had low progesterone. I actually had a hypothyroid concern too. I had very little cervical mucus as well. And so on paper, even though I thought I was really healthy, once I started to dig into my chart and then get some subsequent hormone testing, I was able to just identify some barriers essentially that were preventing me from getting pregnant. And so that felt really just empowering knowing and having that knowledge about me and my body. And so discovering all of this just really excited me and really fueled a passion for the fertility industry because I thought, why didn't I know this? Why didn't anybody ever teach me this in school or just even friends or family? There's just never information that was passed down to me, you know, on from generation to generation. And so I just felt really compelled to be part of this mission and spreading this awareness, this knowledge to other women, because I feel like everybody should have this level of empowerment, this level of body literacy, this level of just understanding about how our bodies work. And so that's when I decided to become a fertility coach. I hadn't gotten pregnant yet, but I thought it's okay. I'm learning a lot and I want to share this with other women. I know it's going to work. And sure enough, it did. I it was really cool. The chart that I had had when I got pregnant, I, um, up until that point, I had only ever had a 10, maybe nine at most an 11 day luteal phase. And when I was tracking my cycle to the next time around, I was at day, I think it was day like 13, 
and then day 14 and then day 15. And by then I was like, I'm pregnant. Like for sure, for sure. I'm pregnant. I just know it. I feel it in my bones. And I knew we had timed sex accurately at that point. I was tracking my cycle and I felt really confident. And it was really cool because I think it ended up being day 21 when I finally took a test. I'm like, okay, I guess I should take a test to confirm, but I didn't even need that test. Like I just knew it. I knew it in my body. I knew based on my chart that I was pregnant. So that was a really cool feeling to not even have to rely on the testing to find out. So yeah, that was just a really cool, magical moment. And I was working with another fertility awareness practitioner, Nora, who's been in your world and has been in your podcast. I was working with her one-on-one and she was helping me dive deeper into my chart and understand it. But yeah, this, this has just given me a lot. So of course I jumped at the chance to sign up for this as well. And to just dive even deeper into this knowledge, because there's a lot to it. There's a lot of different nuances. And I think figuring it out on your own, you can only get so far, but I think when you have other people in your corner, especially you, you're such a wealth of knowledge. There's so many things that you know. And then even hearing the examples from the other women in the course too, have just been really instrumental in deepening my understanding of things too. Even if it's something I haven't experienced myself or with a client, hearing those examples from them just prepares me for those future scenarios that I may encounter as well. So that's where I'm at today, but feels really good. And I'm just really thrilled to be part of this program. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. It's there's, I don't know, as you were talking, I just, there was so many different emotions and it it always connects me back to why this information is so important, right? Why we're, we're both here doing this. And there are so many pieces of your story. I think one piece of your story that you shared was that you had taken birth control for 13 years, which is really common. I feel like that's probably, I mean, with averages, maybe if there was an average time on contraception, it would be a little shorter. But I've seen a lot of clients who've been on birth control for 10 years or more. And just like you said, you know, it's something that we go on at a young age And at the time, we don't have a lot of information about it. And we're never taught about our fertility. And so we never have a reason to think about reevaluating if that's still the best thing to do. And I feel like that specific piece is what I'm always harping on. I harp about it on the podcast. I harp about it in my books. I talk about certain research studies and harp about it even more. But that specific piece of it, I feel that so many of us find ourselves in that situation. So for example, knowing what you know now, had you known about the so post-pill transition phase, it's not that it wouldn't have been devastating because it still took you know far too long for the conception to happen. But I mean... Maybe you could, I don't know if it's even a fair question, but you've, there's so much more that you know now than you did, you know? So if there was something that you could tell your, because you said you started trying at 30. So if there was something you could have said to your 28 year old self, what would it have been? Yeah. So I'll actually take it back to my 26 year old self, because this was a moment that I had had where some, I guess, internal intuition kind of kicked in. That was when I had gotten engaged. So, oh, actually, no, you're right. It was 28. (laughs) I'm glad you asked about 28, actually. I'm sorry, I got the math wrong. Yeah, because we were engaged for two years and got married at 30. So at 28, I remember thinking I had gotten engaged. And that was when we decided, okay, I think it's really going to be start or start to be time to start trying. That felt like the right move at the time. And so I remember going to my annual appointment that year with my OBGYN and asking her specifically, should I get off birth control now? Because I just had this inkling, like, if I'm going to start trying soon, maybe I should give my time or my body some time to wean off of it and just see what happens. And I remember asking her that question. And she told me, oh, no, unless you want to get pregnant tomorrow, make sure that you do not get off birth control, because the second that you do, you're for sure going to get pregnant. So if you're not ready now, you might as well just stay on until you're actually ready to start trying and ready to actually become pregnant. So I thought, okay, that's fine. And I just, I trusted that. I trusted her. I trusted her expertise, her knowledge. After all, she's a doctor. Like, what do I know compared to her? It was just this little voice in the back of my head. And that was such a pivotal moment for me looking back because that was the first time that I kind of ignored that intuition. And knowing what I know now too, it was like my body was telling me, hey, it's probably time to start weaning off of this. It's probably time to start, you know, focusing your health and just seeing. But Yeah. So now thinking back, I 
absolutely would have told myself at the time to trust your intuition, to get off of the pill and just to see what's happening. But even beyond that too, if I had known at the time I started taking birth control that there were natural options, I for sure would have gone this route. I tend to be a more natural oriented person just growing up. We didn't, we never really went to the doctor unless we were bleeding or something and it was something more severe or urgent. But I mean, my mom, if we had a headache, she would give us peppermint oil. Or if we were sick, she would give us like honey with lemon water. Like we didn't really go to the doctor a lot. And so taking medication, taking prescriptions just wasn't part of my upbringing. And it's interesting that I was just so easily convinced that, okay, here's this pill. I never thought to ask about side effects. I never thought to ask about anything. And of course, I mean, I was 17. You don't think about those things. It was more just like, okay, get me on this so that I can start having sex. But yeah, thinking back, it was just, wow, I didn't even think to question it. And there was no information presented to me other than here, take this every day, unless you want to get pregnant, don't skip a pill because then you're going to get pregnant. And it was all about avoidance. And I was just so scared at the time of getting pregnant because I knew I just didn't want that for my life at the time. I knew I wanted to be a mom, but I knew I didn't want to be a mom right then and there. And I have a lot of family members too who have experienced or experienced teen pregnancies. I have a lot of friends who got pregnant in high school too. And I just saw how different their lives were. And I knew that I wanted to graduate. I wanted to get a good job and do all these things first. So yeah, I would absolutely tell myself that knowing that there are these options that I would have gone this route. I would have loved to have tracked my cycle. Like I'm a data junkie. So all of this too just really gets my wheels going too, because it's just, it's fun. It's exciting to me. And yeah, it would have been a really cool piece to implement into my routine at the time. I, I would have loved to have done this sooner too. So now I feel like I have a daughter. Um, she's a year and a half. I cannot wait to pass this information on to her and to give her this knowledge to help her feel empowered and to help her make an informed decision. If she chooses to get on birth control and that feels right for her, that's fine, but at least she'll have all of the information and she can make her own decision at that point too. So yeah, lots of lessons learned <laughs> over the past few years. Mm -hmm. That is so, wow. So when I asked that question, I had no idea how you were going to answer, but I actually had chills because this is an example that I give a lot. So for example, I mean, when I'm interviewed on other podcasts, for example, the birth control question comes up a lot. I think that that really strikes a chord with people when they come into co contact with my work, however they do. Yeah. And your example, so I, I can remember years ago, and I think this was either while I was writing the Fifth Vital Sign or before, I can still remember having a consult with this woman. Mm. So I, I did this like 15 minute consult and she had been trying to conceive for, I don't remember how long, a few months maybe. And she had just immediately come off the pill and she was frantic. It was a very, like she, you could tell she was like vibrating, right? And, you know, the reason obviously that she was so frantic and vibrating is because of all the things that you said, we're all taught that we can get pregnant all the time. And so we, a lot of us, we like, we go on the pill and then while we're on it, we're still terrified <laughs> that we could get yeah. pregnant yes. at any time, right? So yeah. the terror, it's not like the pill alleviates the terror. <laughs> no. We're still terrified. We're just on the pill and terrified. <laughs> and, and because we're always terrified, then the thought of coming off the pill is terrifying. So this is something that I talk about a lot. And this is something that we've talked about in the program, the concept of the intention scale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you ask yourself on a scale of zero to 10, like how much you want a baby today or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is that you could be at like a zero or like a one in the sense of like, we're waiting until we get married. And then like the day you get married, you are a 10. 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so this is the hard part. Because your mind can switch in an instant, mm -hmm. but your body, if you were on the pill, it takes nine to 12 cycles for everything to normalize. And realistically, what I've observed is that it does take about a year or so. It does mm -hmm. take about a year or so, like that's kind of that nine to 12 cycle range before the cycle seems to kind of go back to being really robust and consistent and everything and then if you learn about the nutrient depletion factor and all the different nutrients that are depleted on birth control, it does take a bit of time for that to kind of come online. And so when you said 
that two years before you went to your doctor. This is the example I get. I've given that example in like, who knows how many interviews, the exact one. Mm -hmm. It was like you took the words from my head Mm -hmm. because this is literally still happening. It's just like, what is going on? And I always say like your little voice because you were like, oh, it's just this little voice in my head. Mm -hmm. Like it was strong enough. You called the doctor. You made an appointment. You got up that morning, took a shower. I bet you did your hair and makeup. You probably look just as pretty as you do now. (laughs) Like you went across town, probably Mm -hmm. like as the doctor across town, like you did all Mm -hmm. these things for the doctor to be like, no. And so I just want to highlight that because we all have that intuition. The older that we get, the more we know that when we ignore it, things don't go the way we want. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. (laughs) And that was just huge. So I I just want to draw more attention to that because we all have that. And that's, I feel that that is kind of a natural, and even if you think about it, like now in retrospect, hindsight is twenty twenty. but like, it is logical. It's Mm -hmm. logical to think, well, man, I haven't seen what my actual period looks like in 13 years. Mm -hmm. Wonder what it looks like. Well, I thought I had my period for 13 years though, right? So like, while you're on the pill and you have that withdrawal bleed, you think like, oh, everything's perfect, right? I have this predictable period, this every five days, it comes exactly according to the calendar. I could predict it to the day, to the minute. And I really thought nothing was wrong because there were, I had no symptoms on the birth control pill. Not that I was aware of at the time. Now, looking back, there were definitely like some gut issues and things too that I experienced later on that I can now think like, oh, I did have that while I was on it, but nothing extreme. I know some people get on it right away and maybe they experience really big, like mood shifts or something like that. But I, I was really hunky dory. I was totally fine being on it. It it worked for me. I remembered to take it. And I do remember the days when I would forget to take my pill, how terrified I would be and be like, get away from me. Do not touch me. Like I don't want to get pregnant right now. And so it's just, it's interesting to think that you don't think to question it, right? You don't think to question any of it until you are actually struggling to get pregnant. And I never thought that it was because of the pill. Like in my head, once we started trying, like I thought it was me. I just thought, okay, I'm broken. Something must be wrong with me. And I can't blame the pill fully, but I do think there was that level of just that like subfertility, I guess, that I was experiencing while my body got back into balance. But there was really nothing wrong with me, even though I thought there was. So it was just, yeah, it was a lot at the time. And now knowing what I know, I would definitely never get back on it. I mean, right now I'm what, like a year and a half postpartum and we're not actively trying, but we're also not trying to avoid, like if I got pregnant, I would be fine with it, but I would like to wait a little bit longer. And my midwife, I remember once, like, I think it was day, gosh, maybe day six after I had my baby where she's like, okay, are you ready to get on birth control or what birth control are you going to use? And I told her, I'm using fertility awareness. Like I said, it's so proudly like, oh no, I'm not getting on that pill again. I know when I'm fertile, I'm going to start tracking my cycle. And she kind of looked at me like I was crazy. She was just like, (laughs) okay, like, are you sure? Because, you know, you definitely don't want to get pregnant too soon right after giving birth. I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, I got this. I'm fully confident. I know when I'm fertile. I know when I'm not. And it just felt so against the grain. And I don't understand why it is or why this is not more common. But yeah, it's just something that I will always use like going forward. I have no need to get back on any type of birth control. Like I am a fam person for life. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Love it. Well, so why don't we switch a little bit? I'd love to, I think I'd love to hear a little bit about what your experience has been in the program. I feel like this is your journey is, is kind of like you, you really were new to all this information. And then all of a sudden now you've had to like the just insane download yes, for <laughs> of sure. all of the information <laughs> yeah it's a lot and I don't say that in a bad way like it's a lot because it's so comprehensive so I feel very equipped that even if I'm not encountering this certain situation right now with a client I have this information to refer back to later too so it just feels like I'm getting this complete vault of information of everything that I need and Because I was only charting personally for a long time before I joined this program, I felt like I I knew this much of so much information, right? It was such a small portion from what I experienced because I didn't have really irregular cycles or I didn't have a lot of some of the nuances I think that some of my clients will definitely be facing. And so now I just feel so much more 
prepared to be able to support them. And I know that I have you as a resource. I have the course information. The handouts are incredible too. It just feels like everything is literally laid out for you. This is just such a really well thought out program for sure. And it's very detail oriented. Like you really do think of everything. And so, um, and you're adding to it, even what we talked about today with some of the portions that you're going to be adding in soon too. It's just really an incredible place to be. So I think the information itself is really helpful. But beyond that, just being able to ask questions in the Slack channel whenever something comes up and all of the hot seat information too. Like I've gotten so much more out of those conversations and just talking through things with you and having the ability to run things by you and even Amy too. Amy's great. So I just feel really supported in this too. And I I was intimidated at first, to be honest, because I was such a newbie at this and I'm still very new in my business as well. And I thought, gosh, is this going to be too advanced for me? But I think you do such a great job of meeting people where they're at too. Like you've been able to accommodate me for maybe some of my knowledge gaps, but then you're also able to just really go into this advanced version of things with somebody else who's been at this for a lot longer too. So it really is for everybody, <laughs> anybody oh. who's wanting to join, like it's, it's just a really great program. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. You thought it would be easy. Teach them to chart their menstrual cycles. They said, help them learn to use the menstrual cycle as a vital sign, they said. And then you saw the charts. You saw things that you didn't even know were possible and you really don't know how to interpret them. Fortunately, I've created the perfect solution for you. I want to share with you our top resource for women's health professionals, how to interpret virtually any chart your client throws at you. This new resource breaks down complex chart interpretation into an easy step-by-step -step process. It will give you the tools you need to better support your clients. Head over to fertilityfriday.com slash chart to snag your complimentary copy today. That's fertilityfriday.com slash chart. Now let's go ahead and jump back into today's episode. One question that I get a lot mm -hmm. because the program, it, it's, it's all women in, in the program. And every year we've had somebody who either is pregnant in the program or was recently pregnant or <laughs> it was pregnant before the program started. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always pregnancy. I was pregnant <laughs> for, one yeah. the, mm -hmm. for one of the iterations uh, because our daughters are similar in age. My daughter is going to be two in a couple of months. So tell us honestly about your experience because so tell us how old your daughter was when you started some of your concerns before you joined and then how you managed to fare because this is like a huge question for so many so many people yeah I was really worried about it at first too just because I'm a new mom right and so when I joined let's see let me do the math right when did we start was it August I think it was August or September I think it was September 20th. October. October. Oh, gosh. Okay. See, I I'm know. Like, it's all I don't know what day together. it is it's today. Yeah. <laughs> it was October when we started. So at that point, my little girl was only nine months old. And I was nervous about that because being a mom's very time consuming. I mean, I work full time right now, but I work from home. And so I was just worried about, gosh, am I going to be able to commit to this too with the time commitment? But it has, it has worked out. I really think too that when you find a way to make it work, I was, I was overwhelmed at first because at first I was like, oh gosh, what am I going to do? I wasn't charting at that point either personally, because postpartum, I was just kind of clueless about what I should be doing or how to chart because it was just so different. And I hadn't had my cycle back yet. So yeah, it was thinking like, oh, is this the right time? Should I join? Should I not? But I'm so glad that I did because I don't think there's ever going to be a perfect time to join, right? We're always busy. We always have something in life that might prevent us from getting to where we want to be. But I think when you're passionate about something, when you enjoy the subject, when you want to show up on the calls, when you want to do things, it makes it that much easier just to be able to prioritize it. So I think at first I was in a little bit of a funk, like, oh, what am I doing? But now I think you, you and Amy just really like pulled me back in, like, no, it's okay. We've got you. Let's do this. Let's do this together. And you've been nothing but supportive. So yeah, I think even now with 
geez, almost a year and a half now, it's totally doable. So whether you are pregnant, whether you have a little one, whether you have multiple little ones at home, I mean, even on the calls too, like there's other moms on our calls, there's other women who are trying to get pregnant. And it's just such a great variety and diverse group of women. So we all can learn from each other. We can all support each other. And yeah, it's just really an encouraging place to be too, even with the cohort of the other women. Mm -hmm. Well, no, thank you for that, for sharing that. And I feel another question coming on because obviously when you started the program, you were not cycling mm -hmm. and that was a concern. And so, I mean, that you, you weren't cycling because you were in postpartum. We've also had women in the program who aren't cycling because they are past their menopause. And so there's, there's different scenarios and we have some obviously women who join and they are cycling, but then they get pregnant. So they're no longer <laughs> cycling. Yeah. So maybe share what your experience has been. And even if you want to dive into a little bit of just your experience now that your cycle has come back and how yeah. that was, I, I mean, the postpartum charting question is very popular as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. It's funny too, because I was so obsessed with charting when I was in my fertility journey too. And then once I got pregnant, I didn't have a cycle. I stopped and I kind of got out of that rhythm. So I, when my cycle didn't return, once I had my baby, I, again, just wasn't really charting because I, I didn't know what to chart. I didn't know without my cycle as that indicator. I just felt really lost. But you helped me to understand that essentially, like while I'm pregnant, I'm in this extended luteal phase. When I give birth, it's almost like the period phase. And now I was in this extended follicular phase up until the point that I ovulated. And once you said that to me, it just clicked like, duh, yes, that's what's going on. And so that prompted me to get back into charting. And I started to chart my mucus before I got my um, temperature back or my cycle back. And then once my cycle did return, I was able to actually start to see this really different shift. It was interesting. My temperatures were lower than they typically were, but then also my cervical mucus was just insane. Like the amount of cervical mucus I have now postpartum is crazy compared to where I was pre-fertility because like I mentioned earlier, I really didn't have a whole lot. So even being able to talk through these changes and me not experiencing this before, thinking maybe this wasn't normal, maybe this wasn't okay, like is something wrong that I have so much? And so it was really great to be able to just talk through that and A, get back into the rhythm and the routine of charting, even with a little one, but then also starting to see the differences between postpartum and then starting to see the effects that breastfeeding has on it too because I did and I am still breastfeeding my daughter full time we were doing co-sleeping too so she was literally on me all the time all the time so I know that's partly why I didn't get my cycle back it ended up being I think a year and two months before I got my cycle back so even that I was getting kind of worried like oh is it gonna come back what's going on is it okay so yeah just a lot of different learnings, looking at things from the fertility angle to now looking at things postpartum and just trying to understand what those differences are. And yeah, you've really helped me receive a lot of enlightening around some of that too. So yeah. Well, and I'm sure the listeners have noticed like within the, the, the mentorship program, we do encourage all of our clients to chart regardless of where they are. I mean, we have to kind of find some workarounds for clients who are, say, postmenopause. But even in that scenario, there are still certain things that you can pay attention to and even kind of experiment with, even just for a few weeks, so that you can familiarize yourself with some of the, the different aspects of it. And I mean, I have always firmly held the opinion that it is essential for somebody who is teaching other women to chart to have some level of experience with that. So even in your case where you were a bit limited in the charting, you recently got your cycle back. So that's really exciting. But we create as many avenues as possible for you to see as much <laughs> charts as possible. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I know you mentioned, you know, the hot seats, we have our buzzwords in behind the program. And that's <laughs> a word that we use for what we have essentially chart reviews for our practitioners in a group setting. So we're all meeting on a live call online on a zoom call and everybody gets the opportunity to have their own chart reviewed and it's really interesting because that is what what I have found is that that speeds up the learning in ways that mm -hmm. you just can't otherwise because it exposes you to so many different situations that you wouldn't see in your own chart I don't know if you want to speak to that but I just I wanted to kind of touch on that because there was a part of 
the the class where you were still charting, but obviously it's a little different kind of chart. It's a very, I think it's a very important and actually a very educational experience to chart postpartum when yeah. you are in that extended luteal phase and you can't rely solely on temperature like many of us do with the rise and fall because you're waiting to ovulate. So I do think that there's a lot of value in that type of charting, but it's still not the same as having that regular kind of ovulatory rhythm, right? So you could theoretically feel like you're missing out on something. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And I think seeing the other charts too, even though I wasn't charting myself initially, just getting back into that rhythm by seeing other people's and seeing what they were experiencing too. And there are a couple of other people who are moms or they're working with clients who are moms or in the postpartum phase. I wish too that I would have done the temperature charting before I got my cycle back because I was just doing the cervical mucus. Um, Just in full transparency, I think I was trying to figure out how to make that work, like with co-sleeping with a baby and then doing the thermometer and just waking up at different times, not getting enough sleep to, I couldn't figure out that routine. And then it would have been really cool though, to be able to predict and see that ovulation also with the temp shift because it was just the mucus. And so we saw some patterns arising and we saw some differences and it was telling me essentially that ovulation is around the corner and things are changing, things are shifting. But I wish I would have done the temperature too, just to really, really, really confirm that. So next baby, I'm definitely going to be doing that. But for me, I think for now, the temp drop has been really helping a lot. I know it's not perfect, but just as a postpartum mom, that has made it a lot easier to incorporate into my routine too. So yeah, I've been using that right now for this site for the past cycle. And then um, I just got my period recently too. So I'm on cycle two postpartum. But yeah, just having the experience of all of the charts that we see in the hot seats, like between all of the other clients, our own is just really helpful and really insightful for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I second that. I feel like for, I, I, I feel like I remember having conversations with you about this and my goal was to get I always say like, get something on the board, right? So yes. my goal is just to make it as easy for you as possible to just yeah. start. Yeah. And so I feel like it was probably me that was like, just mm-hmm. don't worry about the temperature. Yes. It's it. obviously <laughs> causing you some anxiety. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yes. going to be perfect because you yeah. literally have a baby under your arm all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and that's the thing too, is like, I, I went from zero to at least doing something and it still gave me an indication of what was going on and then it allowed me to reconnect with my body it allowed me to bring back some of that level of awareness that I had and I don't know I guess even thinking about postpartum too it was something for me I think in that full year of just having my baby it was so focused on her and her needs and her little body and her changes and her milestones and I kind of neglected myself throughout a lot of that too so bringing charting back into my routine also helped me to discover some things that I was not doing as well in terms of like my sleep, right? We talked about that a lot too. And just even my nutrition and how I was nourishing myself. I had stopped taking my supplements too. And just so many things that charting, it wasn't even just about the temperature and the cervical mucus. It was about kind of just tracking my lifestyle, my rhythms, my routines, and getting back into things that would be more nourishing and replenishing for me postpartum. And so that was a really great comeback, I guess, to myself. And you helped me discover that too. Because if I wouldn't have charting or if I wouldn't have started charting again, I felt like I would have just fallen into that same trap and that same negative routine, I guess, that I was in. So, yeah. Well, I love it. And what I, I feel like I have to say this, but I would like we're always hardest on ourselves. Sure. So just to put it all into perspective. <laughs> You literally have a tiny, beautiful little girl. And as a first time mom, it's really life changing and transformative. And it's hard to kind of find your way back to yourself, Mm -hmm. especially in those early months. So I think you did amazing. I'm (laughs) so proud of you. I feel (laughs) like you you just made it all happen. And so while you're kind of like, oh, I wish I would have done this. And oh, I wish I would have done that. I'm like, cheering you on I'm like the crazy <laughs> girlfriend in the background going you are. yes you are <laughs> <laughs> you are the biggest cheerleader yes it's so helpful to have that in your corner too because I don't know like even with friends and stuff like friends cheer you on too and stuff but this is different like this is so I don't even know how to describe it like you bring out like the womanhood in us almost <laughs> right like this is like bringing it back to like our core as a woman our core like identity as a mom like I don't know. It sounds silly, but this is so much deeper than just 
charting your cycles. Like this is about living a better life. This is about being healthier, living with this vitality instead of just dragging yourself through the mud all day, right? Like there's things that we can do to live a better life, be better moms, be better wives, be better, you know, business owners, whatever it is. And so I just think that charting is the gateway to that. And this program has really helped me rediscover that, or that part of myself, I guess, essentially, and just get back on that path that I know I was meant to be on. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> As I always say, I am obsessed with charting. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still obsessed like 20 plus years later. Yes. Here we are still yes. obsessed, but I don't know that there's, I think we've just been given this gift. We've mm-hmm. been given this special tool, this way to yeah. connect with ourselves, this way to kind of gauge our progress. Mm-hmm. This it's it's it can be a little cheerleader because when you yeah. do the things that support your hormone health and your cycle, your cycle rewards you. You yeah. know, you feel better. It all kind of aligns. So yeah. I love that so much. As we I mean, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> <laughs> but as we start bringing our interview to a close. I was thinking of a couple kind of wrap up questions. And I mean, for somebody who is thinking about charting, right? Somebody who's kind of on the verge or someone who's kind of dipped their toe into it. What would you want her to know? I would say don't stop because I think initially it was hard for me. I I was trying to figure out how to do this temperature thing. Some days I would forget to track it. Some days I would forget to like wipe before I peed. And, you know, you think, oh gosh, if I'm not doing it perfectly, what's the point? And I think it's not about perfection. It's about progress and your awareness, your knowledge will deepen the more you do it. If you're just looking at things with one cycle, it doesn't tell you the full story. Like you've got to really keep going to see those patterns, those trends, and the answers will reveal themselves the more that you keep going. So if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling like this is hard, if you're feeling like things don't make sense, that's natural. That's okay. You're exactly where you're meant to be because it's a learning curve for all of us. We're not taught this and there are different nuances and things that are involved in it. So yeah, keep going. And then I would also say to, to enlist support, like you don't have to figure it out on your own. There's women who are experts in these things and who can help you and who can just be that cheerleader for you along the way too. For me, when I was charting by myself, I felt like I was definitely in a good rhythm. And then once I started working with Nora, it was just a whole nother level that I felt like I was able to uncover and and understand things. And so, and now working with you too, is just like, oh my gosh, it just keeps building and building and building. So yeah, I would say definitely keep going and then don't be afraid to ask for support. It's okay to ask for help. And that's why we're here. Love that. Love that so much. And last question. I mean, for somebody who is listening to this episode, they're thinking of jumping into the practitioner program, the mentorship program, that maybe they are curious, like, what's it really like in there? You know, (laughs) am I really going to learn anything? Is it just like, you know, like kind of like her other programs, right? (laughs) I don't know. What would you want someone to know if they're thinking about jumping into the mentorship? Yeah, I would say that it is 1000% worth it. I would totally sign up again. And I, I feel like it's not even just a program too. It's, it's a community. Like I really feel like I have this support around me. If I have questions, if I need something, it's not just about learning the material. It's not just about gaining the knowledge, but it's about really just being supported and held by these other women and by you and Amy and just the whole group of people. So yeah, there's the knowledge component. There's the community component. But then I think too, there's also just this deepening, this deepening understanding of this really useful, helpful tool. And it's going to help you too, to feel more confident. I feel like sometimes too, as practitioners, we may do this ourselves, but until you actually start teaching these things to your clients and helping other people, that's when the confidence comes. Like for me, I knew that I was new in business. I didn't have a lot of clients that I had walked through this with. So I was just really going based on personal experience. But now I feel like if somebody comes to me with a certain issue or a certain concern, I have the resources, I have the community, I have people that I can talk through this with. So I'm not alone in this. And I think that confidence is really just priceless when I think about joining a program like this. Oh, that's so amazing. Clarissa, you are just so sweet. And Mm -hmm. everything you said, you're trying to like make me cry. (laughs) Well, thank you. And I, I just have to commend you too, because if you weren't 
passionate about this work. Like I never would have discovered this, but finding your book, finding your podcast and just everything you put out into the world, it really is making a difference. And it's just amazing to be able to spread this knowledge, to continue to pass it on to other people. And like I said, pass it on to more generations. I think it's so cool too, now that you have a daughter too. Like I cannot wait to see like all the things (laughs) she's going to learn just from you firsthand. It's just really cool to think about. So thank you for all that you do and for the impact that you're having on everybody. Oh, thank you so much. Well, as you say that, I had this thought in my head because the other night we were having dinner at the table, me and my two sons (laughs) and my daughter. And I was like, do you remember when we talked about periods? Do you know what a period is? And my son's like, oh, yeah, like we (laughs) talked I love that so much. (laughs) Men need to know this too. You know, it's funny. I got to share this too, because when I started tracking my cycle, I was so excited about it and so excited about like charting that I told my husband all of these things, of course, right? All these things that I'm learning. I'm like, hey, honey, look at this, look at this, look at this. And we would actually have my chart out on the table. And like, he would remind me like, hey, did you put your temperature in today? Or hey, what about this and this? And I remember when I did get pregnant, that cycle, obviously we were trying we were both looking at my chart every month too to see like, okay, when are you fertile? When is the cervical mucus? When's your peak day? And he actually knew that I was pregnant too. Like he actually understood so much about like my luteal phase and he saw that it was longer and we were both kind of just like, hmm, like, okay, another day. Okay, another day. Here we go. And so like he knew too before we even took a test. So yeah, this isn't just for women. Like men need to know this about us too. And it can be a really cool, empowering thing for you to do with your partner on your fertility journey too. So it doesn't have to just be you doing it. You can make it really fun and track things together. And I think he even had a line of like him taking his supplements on my tracker and he would check it off every day too. I (laughs) love that so much. We're all involved. (laughs) I'm always like somewhat envious when I have clients whose husbands are like so involved in their training. It's like, oh, and he writes down my temperature for me. And like, (laughs) so so we're here for all of it. I love it. Shout out to your hubby. You're awesome. (laughs) (laughs) yeah and if your husband is not as involved or your partner that's also okay because I remember sorry but like I swear we could talk all day but my husband when I got pregnant with our daughter I saw like a 15 day luteal I remember someone asking like you said it was 15 days but like it's eight like right like this specific like but like because I know my luteal phases Mm -hmm. are typically like I have had the occasional 15 day luteal but it's not as typical. We were trying. So I'm, you know, I saw the day 15 come around and I'm like, I think I'm pregnant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just telling him, I'm like, honey, look, 15 days. And he's like, uh, I'm going to like, right. Like he needed, uh, yeah. he, he fact checked me. Yes. I'm like, Dude, I wrote the <laughs> book. I know. He's still, yeah. The man is still fact checking me. So I peed on a stick for his benefit. I was like, okay, I love it. this is just for you. Cause like, I already know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's true. Well, I mean, I would do that all the time. I had like, there were so many things about sperm quality and whatever that I'd be like here here's what you should do here's what you should do but then he'll hear it on a podcast or he'll hear it somewhere else and I'll be like look babe I just found this out like that's what I've been telling you but okay like listen to your podcast it's fine (laughs) (laughs) so yeah I can't win everything yes but yes no thank you so much for being here this was just such a fun conversation I love that we were able to to go there I I love like I said I love being able to dive a little bit deeper because I know a lot of your story, but it was just so powerful to hear it in your own words. So thank you so much for Thanks. for being here and for sharing. And I can't wait to share this episode with with our audience. Yeah, same. Thank you. This was a really fun conversation. Thank you for the opportunity. Welcome. And do you want to do a quick shout out for all the things that you're doing, your podcast and your business? Like, sure. Yeah. Take it I, away. I have Where such a baby podcast you? compared to you, but I did start one. It's called the Fertility Friend Podcast. And I try to really just interview women so that they can share their fertility stories too, because I know that gave me a lot of hope on my journey and just made me feel less alone. So that's what I'm aiming to do with my podcast. So yeah, you can find that on Apple, Spotify and everything too. My website is Blossoming Fertility. I've got a really cool group program coming up too that I'm super excited about. It's called the Conscious Conception Collective. And we're really just going to be diving in and going deep, like charting, but also like the emotional piece, mental piece, spiritual piece, connecting with your baby. There's just so much in it. So I'm excited about that. And then um, I do have a freebie and it's called my fertility meditation affirmations and, or I've got that wrong, fertility affirmations meditation. And um, it's just an audio recording too. And it has a lot of really empowering affirmations that you can just listen to at night before bed or whenever you get a moment to just really relax. 
I listened to something similar when I was on my fertility journey and it just really gave me a sense of comfort and made me feel like it was possible that I could get pregnant, that it was meant for me. So yeah, I created that for people who are trying to conceive. And if that's you, then um, hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll listen and hopefully it'll benefit you too. But yeah, thank you. I'm just really excited to be here. I love fertility. I'm like you, like I'm in this for life. I just, I love this topic. I love women. I love helping women get pregnant. All of this is just really exciting to me. So yeah, thank you. Amazing. Well, for everyone who's on the go, we're going to make sure to put all those links in our show notes page. And yeah, thanks again for being here. This was a lot of fun. That's good. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please share it with a friend. You'll find the show notes page for today's episode over at fertilityfriday.com slash 523. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode with Clarissa. I really enjoyed our conversation. And we touched on such an important topic, which is hormonal contraception and this concept of the post pill subfertile transition phase where there is this period of time that they don't tell us about where your body is kind of transitioning back to a normal cycle where your hormones are normalizing and all those things. And I've spoken at length on the podcast and also in my work in the fifth vital sign in real food for fertility, I've spoken at length about this effect that the pill has on fertility. It's not to say that it has a long-term effect on fertility, but there is this temporary period of subfertility that is associated with pill use, particularly long-term, and long-term is defined as two or more years. And so I feel compelled to share three takeaways with you from this conversation and on this topic. Takeaway number one is that our intuition is really smart. So even without having any formal scientific knowledge or background on reproductive hormones or on the specific modalities or modes of action of hormonal contraceptives, most of the women that I've spoken to over the years had this thought cross their mind, or at least many of us do, especially if you've been on the pill for a while and now you're planning ahead for conception, you know, I wonder if I should take a break. And it's not just a fleeting thought. The thought is there and it's talking to you, right? It's it's interrupting your day because who makes a doctor's appointment for no reason? Who wants to go to the doctor, right? Exactly no one. So this intuition is strong enough. And I've heard this just so many times that many women go on to make a doctor's appointment to then ask their doctor if they should come off birth control. So takeaway one, we need to live, listen, we need to listen to our intuition. Takeaway number two, why is it that so many of us are willing to just delegate or just abscond our medical decisions to the doctor? So whatever it is that the doctor says, we just do it. We just do it. So the doctor says, no, you're good. The like your intuition was irritating enough that you found yourself in the doctor's office. Like you made an appointment, you got ready, you went, you drove across town, right? You took a bath, you did your hair, all the things. And then your doctor's like, no, you're good. And then you're like, cool. I'm just going to, I'm just going to let my doctor make this decision for me. It's amazing to me. This is not anyone's fault. This is how our society has positioned itself around the medical field. We have been trained from birth that the doctor is like a God figure and we need to do whatever they say. And so this is not individual issue. This is a societal issue because when you're in, in Clarissa's case, when her doctor told her, oh yeah, you'll for sure get pregnant for sure. Guaranteed. You can do that. You know, <laughs> no one can make promises like that, but that was not based on scientific facts, research or anything like that. That was based on her doctor's opinion. That had nothing to do with reality, obviously, because Clarissa shared that, you know, when she actually went to her doctor six months later, six months after she had been trying to conceive unsuccessfully, after the doctor had basically promised her that she would get pregnant right away, the doctor was like, oh, well, you know, infertility is pretty common. <laughs> and yeah, so, but that yet that piece of information didn't enter into the discussion when she asked her doctor about coming off the pill early. So, okay. Takeaway number two, it's hard 
it's it's not fair but we need to be the ones that are taking responsibility for our health decisions it doesn't mean we just ignore what our doctors say but i always talk about the boardroom analogy so picture yourself at the head of a boardroom table and all of your health care providers are around it so you do need a doctor you might have a fertility specialist but you may also have a nutritionist you may have a naturopathic doctor or functional medicine doctor you may have an acupuncturist massage therapist you may have a fertility coach or a fertility awareness instructor but you know, all of these individuals are going to share their opinion and their perspective based on their experience. But it should be up to you to then make that final decision about what's best for you. So we shouldn't be just giving the doctor free range to just say whatever they want. And we're just going to say yes to whatever they say. We really need to, you know, get a second opinion and just make sure that it's the best decision for us. Take some time before we make those decisions, etc. And the third takeaway that I wanted to share with you is that we don't need to ask permission in the first place. I think one of the things that I find the most fascinating about this type of conversation, and I've had this conversation at this point hundreds of times. This, this, this is why I'm taking time to share this at the end of the episode. This conversation is one that I've had so many times I can't even count. And what I find the most fascinating is that we feel the need to even ask permission in the first place. I mean, if you want to come off the pill, come off the pill. Why on earth would we feel like we have to ask our doctor's permission to come off the pill? What are they, the boss of us, (laughs) right? Like what is happening here? I find that to just be so interesting, but again, this is no one's fault. This is the society that we live in. So of course it's nerve wracking to come off the pill because you're told that that's the only option. We're told that. When I was growing up, at least they they bigged up condoms and I left high school believing that condoms were effective because they are effective to the tune of 98%. But I have talked about this on the podcast, maybe not as recently, but many times that it seems as though the newer generation, so I'm now in my 40s, I find that the women who are in their 30s and 20s, they don't really trust condoms. You know, they kind of grew up in a time where condoms were like, oh, no, 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 they don't really work. So you need the pill and condoms, which it's a fair comment. Everyone gets to decide whatever they want to do. But I'm just saying that when I grew up, because I grew up in the kind of HIV AIDS era where that was, you know, everything that people were talking about, I was taught that condoms worked. And so I was never under the impression that I needed the pill and condoms in order to prevent pregnancy. And many people actually successfully prevent pregnancy by using condoms. And Obviously, fertility awareness provides a non-hormonal option that when you learn to use it to the highest efficacy, the perfect use efficacy is 99.4%. So when you're using the specific strategies outlined in the study that where that number comes from, and those strategies include the post-ovulatory double check method and the pre ovulatory double check method. So using two different markers on either end of the the fertile window to verify when it starts and when it stops, that leads to the highest possible efficacy. So the bottom line is that you can do this. It's not something that you can't do. But obviously the problem is that most women have never even heard about fertility awareness. They don't even know it exists and they really feel like they have no option. So then of course you feel like you need to ask your doctor's permission because again, in our society, we're trained, the doctors know everything. And so they're the ones we go to with all these problems. But unfortunately, again, this is an area the doctors are not educated in. You know, most doctors are not really educated in fertility awareness based methods whatsoever. So they are not the right person to ask in terms of effectiveness or in terms of even their awareness that it is a valid method because they're trained in medical school that it's just the rhythm method it doesn't work and everybody who uses it is is basically using nothing so they're just going to get pregnant anyways. So I I think if there was the the bottom line here is that we need doctors but we need to understand what modality they're using what their perspectives are, what tools they have in their tool belt. And if we don't necessarily want to rely on those tools that they have available, then we need to then also have additional advisors on our boardroom table so that we are making informed choices. So I'll leave you with this one thought because I think it's really important. Hormonal contraception was the first drug ever created to give to healthy people who had no health conditions whatsoever to shut down a perfectly natural process in the body. So I'm just gonna go over that one more time. Hormonal contraceptives, the pill, was the first drug ever put on the market to give to healthy people, people who did not have a health issue. 
and it was designed to shut down a perfectly healthy and normal process in the body. So with that said, I hope you have a wonderful week, weekend, whenever you're tuning into the show. And of course, as always, until next time, be well and happy charting. And that's a wrap. If you're loving the podcast, then I know you'll love our Fertility Awareness Mastery Mentorship Program. It's a nine month immersive experience that will completely transform the way you work with clients, allowing you not only to teach fertility awareness to your clients, but to use the menstrual cycle as a vital sign and diagnostic tool in your women's health practice. Head over to fertilityfriday.com slash famlive to join the waiting list and be the first to know when registration opens up again. There's no program like this offered anywhere. Transform your practice in nine months. Again, that's fertilityfriday.com slash F-A-M-M-L-I-V-E.